your family, your health, our passion. This is Family Practice with Dr. Jeffrey Fox, sponsored by Family Practice Associates of Lexington, PSC. Visit us at fpalex.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome back. My next guest is Dr. Alexander Patterson, who is a allergist with the Lexington Clinic. And we're at springtime, and a lot of people have, like I say, itchy eyes, runny nose from the pollens and things. But that's not the only thing that causes allergies. Tell us about what you do. Sure. So allergy is a very particular type of abnormal immune system response to something that shouldn't actually be a problem. Pollens aren't dangerous to us, but our body just freaks out whenever we have these exposures. And we subsequently develop all of these signs and symptoms that people think of as allergies. It's usually the nose and sinuses that are a problem. You get a runny nose, watery, itchy eyes, you drip, you get stuffy, you get sinus infections. There's all kinds of really bad and really life impacting symptoms that people tend to develop, especially this time of year. But it could be to anything, it doesn't have to be a pollen. Absolutely, so there are all kinds of things in the environment that cause us to have allergies. Pollens, both from trees, grasses, weeds, mold spores can be a problem. Pets like cats and dogs, other animals, horses, cows, all can be a problem. Dust mites are also another thing that are a problem, but those are just the environmental allergies. Medications, people can have allergies to. Foods, people can have allergies to. And then there's all kinds of other weird substances too, different cosmetics or topical products, and all of them can present in a lot of different ways. So sometimes it's tricky to sort out what the cause of a person's symptoms actually are. Well, you mentioned sorting it out. So how do you, they come to see that, what do you do? And you know, is it a blood test, is it a skin test, is it just talking to the person? Tell me Sure, that. so people often forget that talking to a patient is a test, because every time, every detail that I get from a patient, that's gonna help me decide, are we moving towards allergy? Is this something in the allergy world, or is this something different? But you're right, testing is often where we end up, and especially for environmental allergies, Skin testing is one of the best ways we can do it. I actually brought one of my little uh, tooth, uh, not tooth, it's a plastic toothpick is really what it is. We, we call it a skin prick test device, but it's a, a fancy medical toothpick. There's no metal though, there's no needle, it's not a shot, it's literally a little plastic toothpick. You know, I was looking at that and when you, when you showed me, first of all, because people when they think skin test, they think, oh, you're gonna do that, stick me, hundred times? Oh yeah, well people really blow it out of proportion. Now it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. It's one prick per thing we're going to test you to and so our standard environmental panel that we do is 60 different pricks. That's that's our adult panel but um, there, there's you know any number of things that we can test people to when we're when we're looking for that but it, it's really not that bad. It's, a, it's one prick per thing we're testing you to. The test develops for 15 minutes and then we know what you're allergic to. Now Skin testing is the gold standard. Is there also a blood test or is skin test better? Well, there, that's certainly a conversation that we'll have for each patient who comes in. We tend to rely on skin testing because that tells me how a patient's body is going to react to a substance. Blood testing gives me more of an idea of the possibility of reactions. And that actually brings up an important point. Whenever we have a, a test, either a skin test or a blood test that says what you're allergic to, we always have to match that up to your clinical history. Just because a test says you're allergic, we have to decide how does that fit into your clinical history, your context, and if that matches up with your disease that we're trying to treat. We always have to go back to those symptoms that you're having and if the test makes sense. Like when we teach patients in our office, I always say when in doubt, don't look at the test, talk to the patient. Absolutely. Yeah. So we say that the, the, the gold standard test is skin testing, but really the gold standard test is what happens when you're exposed to the thing. That's hard to do for pollens and things like that, but um, certainly when it comes to foods or medications, we'll even perform oral challenges in the office to confirm or exclude a diagnosis of so allergies. you've got a diagnosis, how do you treat it? Oh, there's all different kinds of ways. When it comes to environmental allergies, there are three main ways that I talk to my patients about treating. Number one is avoidance, or at least reduction in your exposure to those things. Now that can be a tricky, um, a tricky sell for some people, especially if it's a beloved pet or anything like that. I always reassure patients, though, that I am a pet-friendly allergist. They're gonna get rid of me before they get rid of their animals, so I'm willing to work with that. But there are lots of ways that we can change a person's environment to help reduce their exposure to the things they're allergic to. So that's step number one. 
Step number two is taking medicines. Medicines, though, treat the symptoms of allergies. There's all different kinds of medicines, especially over-the-counter medicines that people have often tried before they come see me. Allergy pills and nose sprays being the two most common ones. So I always, whenever I talk to patients about their medicines, we come up with a customized plan to help treat their symptoms based on their testing results to, to help improve their quality of life because medicines are what start to work the most quickly when it comes to allergies. And then step three is allergen immunotherapy or more commonly known as allergy shots. So that is where we actually treat the root of the cause. We teach the body, the immune system, that all of these things it's reacting to, we, we try and teach it that they're not dangerous and that it's okay to see these things and not respond. And it takes a long time to teach the body that response. So allergy shots are certainly an option in our arsenal of tools that we have to help treat these allergies. Well, that's great information. We appreciate all you do. And this time of year, I know you're busy. Absolutely. And it just goes on and on from there. It does, it right. does. Spring allergy season is, is a busy time for sure. Thank you for coming in, we appreciate it. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And if you have allergies, Dr. Patterson can help. We'll be right back.